myself Dr. Manan Devedi. Today I am going to present before you my uh, second lecture on diplomatic practice and the study of diplomacy. International relations as a discipline has been dealt by diplomatists and by kings and queens since the last 1000 to 2000 years and even in the before Christ era. If you look into it, the difference that we find in the diplomacy that went on in the European world uh, in the 15th and 16th century and what, what goes on in the 20th century, what went on in the 20th century and what goes on now in a post-truth age, in a Covidian age of international relations happens to be that of the fact that in the, in the olden times, in the ancient regime as they call it, in the ancient regime there were kings, queens, nobles, their families and the related paraphernalia who used to become the de rigueur diplomats. They used to become the de rigueur diplomats of a country, of a region, of an institution. But as time progressed, the various nations rose up to the realization that there has to be a specialized agency, there needs to be a specialized department of foreign service people, of Indian foreign service is an example only, or foreign service diplomats who then can be trained in the art of negotiations, who can be trained in the art of conflict resolution, who can be trained in the art of peacekeeping, who know about the art of peace, uh, uh, peace making and thus arose a new category, a new genre of uh, diplomats and foreign uh, public personnel. When we talk about uh, diplomacy, then there happens to be this idea which I took up as a from a cinematic construct, from a uh, Hollywood cinematic construct, which happens to be Spider-Man Part One, when Spider-Man is has just realized that he's special, he's born with special powers, and he knows that he can really get the better of the villains, the criminals, and the crooks very easily. At that particular point of time, Spider-Man says that yes, I have to save the world, I have to save the mankind. I have to save my United States of America. And as he is about to jump from one building to the other, exper experimenting with his newly found powers, at that point of time, his uncle is shot and mugged, and his uncle is actually shot dead. His name is Uncle Ben. He jumps down from the building and talks to his uncle. Uncle is in the throes of death. Uh, the uncle is in the throes of death. He is about to die. He is about to leave for another world and he gives and he, all he manages to do is to give a talisman of life, a message for the life of great value to the entire mankind, to America and to Peter Parker, the character of Spider-Man in Spider-Man part 1. He says, with great power comes great responsibility. That is the key nugget of wisdom that we are going to zero in upon that we are going to concentrate upon. When we talk about this nugget of wisdom, what we realize is that if United States of America really has to latch on to its power, if People's Republic of China has to become the most powerful, the most hegemonistic and the most expansionist state, then they need to be responsible players too. And if India yearns for that kind of a seat, then they need to be responsible diplomats. Now, when you talk about diplomacy, how did the word, word, word diplomacy arose? That should become a kind of a query for all the practitioners, students and also for the scholars of international relations. There we can easily find that it is a Greek term, diplo, the word diplomacy. The entire word, word diplomacy comes from the word diplo. Diplo means to carry or to hold or to transfer from one institution to another or uh, let us say to, uh, to, uh, to have a document. So, you know in the olden European times, in the time of the Italian city states that is Venice, Milan, during the times of uh, Niccolo Machiavelli, during the times of the European conquistadors and the crusades between the Islam and Christianity, the diplomat used to be a, the diplomat used to be a person initially, he used to be a trader. He used to be a traveler onto the state and the national highways when he would ride astride his horse and whenever being asked to, to give his uh, designation, his identity and to ask his uh, 
when people used to ask him the security personnel would ask him that where is jazi come from he you, he had to be ready with that diploma document so you know then he would get down on horse himself and he would sleep in the inn have a nice food he is going to have wine and everything so the general idea that we are talking about is that diplomacy happens to be a immunity giver to people what how can we look at it if we if we go, go 5 to 6 years in the past then we are going to realize that if if we refer to the idea of devyani khobra gade then we realize that yes she was a lady who had a um, had a household servant and she allegedly misbehaved with that household christian servant and she got the stick from the american authorities at that particular point of time where did the idea of diplomatic immunity go because she is an indian diplomat she still is and she, at that point of time she was representing india in united states of america with a senior uh, paraphernalia so at that point of time what we need to realize is that how did she how was why, how and why she was negated this diplomatic immunity so you know these are some nuggets which we need which normally are present with commoners like us like you participants that this is how diplomacy works but diplomacy now can be called as immediacy of diplomacy that is tvarit diplomacy or immediacy of diplomacy in the sense that all the nation state heads they sit together they talk with each other they have a nice time they uh, and they interact with their interlocutors and interpreters but what all decisions are being made during a one day meeting between the twin delegations of two countries those decisions are taking place in a live fashion those decisions are taking place in a live manner in the sense that it is the immediate show it is the spectator sport wherein large number of lakhs and crores of international audiences know that what is going on in the minds and in the words which are being exchanged between prime minister narendra modi and uh, let's say president trump now when we talk about the qualities of a diplomat the qualities of a diplomat that we need to have many issues coming to our mind out of our mind simultaneously in a very uh, rambustious manner when we talk about these myriad issues then the first idea or the first practical sense of being a diplomat which defines diplomacy happens to be that of the persona of the diplomat the personal charm of the diplomat when prime minister modi went to the madison square garden there he went in and he talked about how great india was but he did not do it in a very arcane and a nihilistic or a historically rigid manner but he did it very nicely that is first of all he broke apart the idea of mark tully where in mark tully the british broadcasting corporation journalist had actually created a mindset mindset all across the world that india is a city india is a state of cows of snake charmers of serpents and people are just waiting in their stupor and when the when the cow is going to hit her own uh, back and the fly is going to run away from her back that kind of a undeveloped kind of a uh, definition that kind of a very initial and belittling information and image making exercise about india who had to be very proactively curtailed by prime minister modi he went in there and the reactions which the old people the middle aged people and the young men, young girls and boys of madison square garden had to give were ecstatic they said yes look at this great man he is a, such a nice diplomat he is a personality wherein he is talking all the way from the domestic surat shaucharya to space travel that is the kind of uh, range that prime minister modi has so you know persona charm intelligence tact and the ability to lie and the ability to uh, to hide something which can be painful to the other side that also happened to be the key ingredients of a good diplomat now i would like to thank i extend my heartfelt thankfulness to my dear past participants to my esteemed participants for being 
such coveted listeners to this uh, to these few words which come to me and to these nuggets of ideas which i want to disseminate to you thanks a lot my dear participants once again